It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Hey, American woman. Get away from me, man. I don't want you around here no more. I got to tell you a funny story about this. What? Yeah, this is this is playing on the radio back when you were young. No, man. but it's not even about that. It's even more recent. In uh, let me think, 2004 at the Republican National Convention, um, they were going to renominate George W. Bush and stuff. And the organizers thought, oh well, we'll play when when uh, Laura, that was his wife, you may remember, mm-hmm. Laura Bush came out. We'll play American Woman. And I'm thinking, you morons, don't you know what that song says? But you know, they somebody said, oh, it's American Woman, and she's the first lady will play american no. Woman. they went no that's right and did they the, do it at the last minute maybe you know somebody that you know had once listened to like rock and roll radio said hey that might not be <laughs> the best thing to do so help me but you know they were brain dead about a lot of things you know what tell me about that you know i listened to the lyrics and i got the impression it's kind of like like canada or any other country or anywhere yeah. on the planet they're going Man, stay away from me. Yeah. I don't want your yeah. crap, you know. I don't want you hanging around my door. I don't want your no-win war or something like this. Something about the war. Oh, you yeah. Know? And that was yeah. anti-war. But let me give you another one along the same lines. When um, when uh, Bill Clinton was uh, uh, being re-nominated at the Democratic Convention don't for his second term. stop thinking about no, Yeah, they, that was his theme song. Oh, okay. But um, during the breaks, they played a song that was really, really popular then. And it was called uh, Mambo Number no. Five. A little bit of Monica. Bad, oh. bad move on somebody's part. You know, I remember part. that. Yeah. You know, that was you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> a little inside joke. In yeah, there. yeah. These yeah. guys, you know, I never really understood the term hubris. Yeah. Until you start seeing they're so in your face. Yeah, you know, they're just they're just making fun of us. You know, the the uh, yeah, we'll get onto this Ron Paul thing too. We definitely want to talk about that, but. You know, yeah, I, let's do. I, I, I really want to finish up on this because yeah. it's so instructive. And what you know, while we got you, and you're the expert on this stuff, the Swiss. Let's walk, walk me through this because you know what's the anniversary this week? It's the anniversary. This is the anniversary of uh, that uh, loser day that Richard Nixon told the United States uh, took the United States off what was left. It wasn't much, but what was left of the gold standard, and uh, set us on the course for the place at which we have now arrived. Uh <laughs> You know, think about this. Define think about that. this. Think what about place this. Are no, we right now? Th- here's where we are. Here's where we are. Since he did that, if you were to trust the official government numbers, which are, nobody listening to this show to do that, but if you were to trust the official uh, CPI numbers, the Consumer Price Index numbers, you would have to say since that happened, the the uh, purchasing power of the dollar has fallen by 70, 75 percent. Well, it's been a lot more than that, but that's bad enough using their official numbers. And in the meantime, the price of gold has risen by almost. Well, the other day it was, and it's backed off a little bit, corrected a little bit, but almost 5,000%, 5,000% since he took us off the gold standard. So where do you think we would have been better off as a country, being on the gold standard or, or off? But this is the 40th anniversary of that move, which, by the way, which, by the way, was a temporary move. When Nixon announced it, he went on television, national TV on Sunday night. I played oh, it yesterday. He's you? like, you know, temporarily, yeah. I'm going to temporarily, temporarily. You know, and, and, and it's to restore the faith in the dollar. I uh, I told that story on Judge Napolitano's show, Freedom Watch, on Fox the other night. And I go, and it was a temporary movie. And he goes, he goes, well, you know, it's like Milton Friedman says, uh, uh, nothing in, in the world has is, is comes as close to eternal life as a temporary government program. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and they always prove it true. Now... Now, let's talk about All right. Switzerland, okay? Yeah. Switzerland was known for being kind of not the last economy yeah. to be on the gold standard, yeah. right? Yeah. Switzerland and, then, and yeah, Lebanon was for a while had a 40% backing also. Well, they took Now there are none. Battleships took care of that. <laughs> yeah. So so now we have Switzerland and they go, "All right, uh we're on the gold standard. Thank you very much. We got our own banks here. You know, Geneva, uh, is famous for having uh, privacy and banking, and all of a sudden the pressure comes down. Keep in mind, this is a small country, the size, heck, I don't know, one fifth the size of Arizona or it's something. It's like Maricopa County or something. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. So, you know, so it's not very big, but geographically located. And prosperous. Oh my gosh. They're doing just fine. Well, it's it, it's too prosperous. 
they're going, oh, you're too prosperous. Anyway, so tell me about in the, around 2000, you know, www.warmonger.com comes in and he goes for whatever purpose. I don't even understand. Tell me the history of why they went off the gold standard and how. Um, I'm sorry that you asked me that because I can't really remember. You know, it's like, you know, it's like um, Switzerland. There were a lot of signs that the famed Swiss banking uh, uh, reputation was starting to shatter and crack a little bit. They started, um, you know, there was uh, Swiss banking secrecy was highly vaunted around the world. It was, you know, one of the things, you know, you could always count on them for discretion, for privacy, keep your private affairs private and stuff. They started cracking under U.S. pressure. They started to, over the over the last ten years or so. They've cracked quite a bit, and they started cooperating with the United States government, and uh, you know, reporting on uh, clients' private dealings and and so on and so forth. And uh, um, I remember one of the stories. You do, yeah, yeah. Remember, it was uh, they wanted repatriation of uh, gas, Jews, gold, money. That in the one, switch. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that one, and I didn't feel too bad about that. You know, people that had stolen money. Oh, but the, you knew that that was, you know, the wedge that they were going to yeah. use to open up the entire thing. Well, lately it's been, you know, the United States passes a law that, uh, you know, as though Switzerland has to abide by it. So the United States passes a law about, uh, you know, the taxes people pay if the uh, if the client of the uh, of a Swiss bank. Um, is cheating on his taxes and it's a criminal matter back in the United States. That's the matter. Be- that's a matter between, you know, the uh, the client, the individual, and the United States government. What the hell should it have to do with Switzerland? And why should the United States be able to strong arm Switzerland to participating in its uh, in its programs and report to the United States government what its clients are doing? This is uh, absolutely runs against the grain of you know 800 years of Swiss history. And yet they've kind of capitulated on that. Now, on the other hand, there's blowback. There's a reaction to it. The Swiss and the Swiss financial institutions are getting sick and tired of taking orders from the United States government. And they're getting more outspoken about it. Um, you know, they have they have cracked and they have accommodated the United States government, the IRS, and so on uh, in a number of cases. But they're getting really outspoken about it. it's not worth it. We don't want American clients anymore. No, so help me. One of the banks. Oh no, I know yeah. people. They say you can't get a bank account. They don't want to deal with especially Americans, especially if you have money. Yeah. This, yeah, they, they don't want to deal with Americans. This is going on around the world to a smaller degree. You know that uh, instead Panama. of yeah, instead of the United States and the United States dollar being welcome, being desired, and United States uh, business and so on, it's like um, your government is uh, is. Um, is like a vampire draining us with rules and regulations and things, you know, loading us down brick by brick by brick with all kinds of things that we have to do to do business with American citizens. We don't want your business anymore. Not but, a good sign. You know, we have on the show, I mean, on the website, uh, Simon Black, you know, the sovereign man, sovereignman.com, and he travels around the world. And this is a common theme. You know, there's probably like you got to jump through some hoops, you know, uh, Michael. Uh, Nesman did a, yeah. our, our first uh, inaugural edition of the magazine. He he brings up a lot of this stuff. You need an expert just to open a bank account. It's awful because it, so when we come back, I, I want to go ahead and finish up on this because you know the Swiss find themselves in a situation to where they're too prosperous. Yeah. How? How? What? Yeah. What? How can they position themselves to survive and thrive in the future? Are they going to be forced to go down with their the anchor around their ankle called the Euro?